Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I'm once again answering some of your questions, such as, do I think AP's new CEO strategy is a good one? And why have you never heard of this particular German brand, especially if you're American? All that and more in today's episode. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing my Piaget Polo 45 Flyback Chronograph GMT. Absolutely love it. I'm aware most people do not adore this watch, but I have a long history with Piaget having worked for them, and it holds a special place in my heart. Also, guys, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. We just got in some very cool new inventory, including the extremely rarely seen Glasute Original Senator Calendar Moon Phase, one of the best values for a complete calendar on the market. We also got in a vintage Tudor Submariner, the large size with a beautifully even creamy patina dial. Absolutely take a look at it if you're a vintage nut. And the very hard to get nowadays Parmigiani Tonda GT annual calendar chronograph, their new integrated bracelet sports watch. This one cannot be missed. All that and way more at DelrayWatch.com, the best place for a watch geek to buy a watch. Link in the description below. Anyway, guys, you know the spiel. These are the questions you asked me on my Instagram account at Federico Talks Watches. Few times a month, the Q and A picture pops up. When you see that picture, feel free to ask your question. When I get enough questions, I take the picture down. Please do not DM me; I do not check them. And we start in no particular order with Seth and Co, a fellow watch dealer. Seth says, "What's your favorite sport to watch?" Well, Seth, I don't actually watch a ton of sports, but I'd say my favorite are are football of the European variety, basketball. Uh, unfortunately, my Knicks lost. Um, and I love motorsport, so like F1, MotoGP, that type of stuff. But I'll also watch like the Super Bowl, uh, I'll pretty much watch anything that's not baseball. Javalos2000, how does interest rates or other factors impo impact how much inventory you carry? I've noticed dealers have lower inventory than the past. Well, I can't speak for other dealers or for the market in general. I'm going to talk about this in terms of my own kind of uh, experience. Um, but I'm actually carrying more inventory than ever. So we do not do debt here at Delray Watch. Uh, yes, we, we have a line of credit, a very small one that's almost never used. The bank just kind of gave it to us. But uh, we don't do consignment. We don't do debt. We don't borrow unless it's from our own capital, business partner's capital. So uh, I could give two shits about interest rates uh, as far as me buying, because I'm not buying on credit. Um, and in fact, other dealers do. Now they're dumping, which is why I'm buying more than ever, because I get special terms, because they have high interest. <laughs> Heck Sheep says, hey, Fed, what's your opinion on the new AP CEO lowering production numbers? At least this is what the AD told me. Also, what's your opinion of the, of the Code 1159 steel? So let's start with Code 1159 steel. It's a total piece of shit. I can give a crap about the 1159. It's one of the ugliest watches ever made. And it's only exists as an excuse for them to make you spend money. So you can then get on a list for a Royal Oak. So moving on to the real question on what do I think of their new strategy of lowering numbers? I think it's necessary. As opposed to what a lot of viewers are gonna tell me, because I'm sure a few of you are salty, the truth is very easy to get an AP now compared to previous times. Maybe not a jumbo, maybe not a blue dial, but they have inventory and demand has gone way down and they wanna keep that mystique of making sure they're hard to get because it keeps them kind of relevant and hyped. So if they want to keep that, they have to lower production numbers. So I think it makes a lot of sense for their business model and uh, not a hard decision to make for the new CEO, in my opinion. Max Sabatka. Hey, 
Howdy Fed, rather, visited Geneva recently. Have you ever bought a watch there? So I've been to Geneva a few times, but I've never bought a watch there. I've seen a ton of watches there, but I've never bought a watch there because it's actually expensive in my opinion. There are other parts of the world where it is cheaper, the tax-free parts of the world, parts of the world where you get bigger percentage of tax back at the airport, parts of the world, including the U.S., where the pre-owned market is just less expensive. Geneva is great for looking, and you might want to commemorate a trip by buying, but considering I go there quite often, I don't need to buy a watch in Geneva, and it's not favorable for me to buy a watch in Geneva. And then Freddie J. Flores. What is... Uh, Union Glasuta, and why haven't I heard from it in the past, especially here in the U.S.? Very uh, small brand based out of Glasuta that don't make anything particularly special. A lot of Eta movements. Yeah, cool watches, cool price, but you haven't heard of them, A, because they're pretty anonymous in terms of what they make. Uh, even though I would own one for the right price, they make sturdy watches, but also they have no U.S. distribution as far as I know. They're not really sold here. They don't have a presence here, so you're not going to see them advertised here or in stores here, which makes a big difference. But it's just one of the many whatever brands that exist uh, in the world. Anyway, guys, that's it for me today. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Really does help. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Take care.